I see we have Francois, Gerald, Santi, Mark, Ellison, Sandra, Tamsin. Those are the names I can see at the top of the list. Welcome. I'd like to check if you can hear me. So I'm going to type in, can you hear me? Because I'd like each of you to get an experience of typing back. You can't, I can't hear you. I would need to um, open a microphone, which I will do a little later towards the end. If those of you have got a microphone that you've tested that works, um, you know, if you use Skype or something similar on your laptop or your PC, if you've got a, a built-in mic or a, or a headset, you can talk to me. But basically what works well for the beginning of the webinar is we talk to each other using the chat box on Sprout, which is on the bottom right of your of your screen. I can see Francois, thank you, Alison, Tamsin, Mark, Sandra, Santi. Can you guys just put, you, you'll see there's even little emoticons that you can add there, little smiley faces, little thumbs up. You can even change the size of the font. Awesome, Santi, I'm glad. You see, now I need this, guys. What I want to share with you is this is technology. Technology is not perfect. Um, I've been spending the last hour trying to get my beautiful slideshow to look as good as I can on this platform, and it looks pretty good. I imagine you're looking at the Superman sales slide. But in the presentation, there's a couple of slides that have gone slightly wonky. It's technology. Um, and what makes it interesting is that I want it to be interactive. I'm normally in a classroom. Uh, as some of you may have been in my live training, I can hear and interact with you. But the way we do it on this webinar is through this little text box. So I'm like doing, Mark, well, thank you, Mark, for saying yes. I'm doing what um, men are not supposed to be good at multitasking. I'm managing a slideshow, audio, and I'm trying to read and pay attention and focus. But listen, I'm a salesman just like all of you. And we have to learn to multitask and think on our feet. So welcome. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Um, uh, prior to this webinar, there were a couple of videos that went out, sent uh, by my partner and colleague Francois, just so all of you know. Francois is also going to be chatting to you. He's my partner and colleague. He's in a different part of the world. He's in another office completely. But thanks to technology, him and I will be doing our best to give you an awesome learning experience here for this webinar. So cool. Thanks for being here, Francois. Uh, how many of you have watched the video? So could you put in other than none? One or both. That's all I want you to type in. You've either watched none of the videos or you've watched one of the videos or both. Just so I get a sense because I'm going to uh, attend in both. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see. Tamsin, you've watched both. Thank you very much. Alison, you've watched none. Mark, you've watched none. Francois, you've watched both. All right. That gives me a sense. Gerald? Have you watched any? None. Interesting. Uh, who hasn't answered yet? I've had Gerald, I've had Francois, I've had Mark, I've had Santi, Ellison, Tamsin. I think that's it. All right, so because quite a couple of you haven't watched any of them, I'm going to go through them. And the title of this webinar and of this training series is called The Seven Secrets of Sales Superstars. As you can see, I could have also called it The Seven Habits. Because the longer you're in sales, the more you realize, and some of you already have seen this, that it's about cultivating good habits. You know, we're all good at some things. Some of us are good at a lot of things, but we can't all be good at everything. So as we progress on this path of becoming a sales professional, we hone our skills and we do our very best to develop good habits. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, the seven habits or seven secrets. I'm going to run through, quite quickly through the slides. There's a lot of them. We've only got an hour, so pay attention um, to the slides, if you could. This is all part of my Street Smart Selling Skills program, which I began writing three or four years ago. Currently, we're sitting at over 350 pages of top-class content, um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later. But really, what I want to ask you as a question is, what is selling? I'm going to ask you to type an answer in there. What is selling, really? If we had to look in the dictionary and put a definition on selling, sales is, I mean, while you're thinking or typing, I can tell you marketing is the creation of awareness of a product or service or brand. So if marketing creates an awareness of a product, service, or brand, what is selling? I'm going to ask you guys to type. What do you think it is? And by the way, I don't mind if you type and it's wrong. Because it's not a test. This. It's just what do you think? So I'm going to type the question. What is selling? This is what we do. What is it, though? Aha, uh -huh. Mark providing a service for money. Thank you, Mark. I think that's not a bad definition. Providing a service for money. 
let's see. Selling is the transfer of money for goods. Mm, I like that as well. Selling a company's product and service for products. Alison, you mean for money? Convincing someone they want what you can offer them. I like that, Francois. Interesting. I wonder if we Google definition of selling. What would come up? Selling is helping a potential client to make the decision to use what you have to offer. They're all believing in your product. I like this, guys. You see, this is how I like the webinar to be. Otherwise, my voice can just drone on and on and on. So keep an eye on the slides. They're going to change pretty quickly. And please do this. Keep commenting. You can even talk to each other. You can say, good one, Gerald, or Leka Francois. You know, everybody can see everybody's texts, which is really cool, the way this thing works. Okay. All right. So let me tell you what I believe it is. I believe selling is the art and science of assisting our customers to make the correct win-win buying decision. It's a long-winded definition, but there's an art to it, and there's a science. The art is right brand, the science is left brand. It's about feeling in the moment and also knowing that there's a science. Here's the customer, here's you, putting building blocks in place in the sales bridge. I'll go into this in a bit more detail. So what are these seven secrets? Well, secret one, there's a clue. And those of you who watched the video will know. And perhaps you could type in what do you think secret one is based on the picture you see right here. Anybody want to type in what you think the first secret is? Think and act like a professional. Think and behave and act like a professional. Okay? So this is the first module whenever I teach to do sales training. I start off by positioning sales as a profession. And I say to people, let's adopt a sales mindset. Let's look at some of the characteristics of a professional. Apologies about this little image. Um, that's technology. It was perfectly positioned, but never mind. Look below. Professionals have a body of knowledge. They study for anywhere between three to seven years, or sometimes 11 if they want to specialize. Years. They dress in a specific way. They use tools of their trade. The doctor has a stethoscope. The dentist has a drawer. They always have a detailed, busy, and well-organized diary. Now ask yourself this. How detailed and well-organized is your diary? When I do sales training, it amazes me how many salespeople either don't have a diary or they have a diary which is empty or almost empty. It's not full of notes, appointments, follow-ups, things to pick up, drop-off, quotes to prepare, deadlines, targets, um, wedding anniversaries, birthdays, holidays. I've got a very detailed, busy, and well-organized diary because I think and act like a professional. and I'll show you some photos of that shortly. What else? You look at any professional in the world, doesn't matter what they do, they ask a heck of a lot of questions. They have an admin system that works for them. They're well prepared. They make you feel comfortable and trusting, and they're obliged to do CPD. These are all characteristics of successful salespeople too. You don't have to study for seven years, five years. You learn through your experience. But attending short sales training courses, webinars like this, reading books on selling, Attending training, uh, joining sales associations, joining public speaking forums. That's what gets you to start behaving like this. And when you behave like this, you start getting a lot more respect from customers. And this is one of the things that many, many salespeople struggle with is customers who don't pitch up, forget about appointments, mess them around, ask them to do a lot of work preparing a proposal, don't sign the deal, make promises. The minute we start thinking and acting like a professional, we start getting respect. So how committed are you to continuous professional development? There's meant to be a word here, development, CPD. What courses have you attended? How many hours of training have you had? In many cases, it's a day or two or three. How many books on selling have you read? How many autobiographies? And I'm not here to make you feel guilty at all. I'm here to ask you powerful questions, which get you to say, if you want to become great at selling, a superstar, then you should think about investing time in knowledge is power. Reading a book, coming on this webinar, coming on one of my live training courses or my online courses, getting a sales coach. I say a minimum an hour a week is what we should be learning. Because if you don't take yourself and your profession seriously, who else will? I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this profession of selling. Um, this is interesting. Here's Hussein Bolt. 
will spend years preparing to run for 10 seconds. And I realized a few years ago, me included, that most of us will spend a few seconds of prep, quick bit of product knowledge, a couple of clever closing techniques or objective handling techniques, and then we're like, we're in, we're styling, we don't need to learn anymore. So I salute all of you for coming on this webinar and for watching the videos because you take this profession seriously. You're on the right track. Well done. Right. So that's the first secret. The second secret is given a clue by the diagram on the left, this diagram here. I'm going to ask you again, please, type in what you think the second clue is. I told you the first one was think and act like a professional. What do you think the second one could be? Francois says understanding your client. That's close. I like that. Who else has something to say? Remember, guys, I don't mind if you're wrong. I just want to get you thinking. Because the best way to sell, using the brain, says thank you, Sandra. Know thyself. Hey, Mark, that's deep and profound. Know they are. That's, and you're all on the right track. All on the right track. Anybody else? Tamsin? Santi? The second secret or habit is understand the psychology. Now, I often say you do not have to become a psychologist to do well at selling, but it really helps to understand the psychology. In very simple terms, I said it, explained it more in my videos. And by the way, you can find the videos on my website under the articles section. You've all got a left and a right hemisphere, each one of you on this webinar, me, and your customer. Knowing the difference between the logical, analytical, intuitive, organized, structured side of our life, admin and reports and uh, diaries, and the right side, the emotional, creative, out of the box, inspired, and, and, and finding how to use them to close more deals and adapting the way we sell to the left brain person to the right brain person is very important. But underlying the left and the right hemisphere is the conscious subconscious memory mechanism. And this is huge because what I've realized is we have to influence the memories, beliefs, and programs of our customer. If they believe that we as the salesperson and our product and or our service and our brand are great, if they have positive beliefs, they're going to buy. If they have negative beliefs, they're going to object and find reasons not to buy. And someone once said to me, that you either close the client to buy from you or you close them not to buy from you. Either way, you've always got to be closing, which is another one of the secrets. We'll come to that just now. Understanding this communication. Let's quickly try this, guys. Have you got your fingers on the keyboard? Let's see how quickly you can type the answer to this. Money doesn't grow on. Can you put the answer in? Anybody? Hey, well done, Francois Allison. Thanks, Mark. Cool. Children should be seen or not. What comes up? You guys are quick. All salespeople are. <laughs> what do you get when I say all salespeople are? You get great. You get awesome. Oh, thanks, Francois. You get pushy. Some people think they are. Hungry. I like that, Alison. I hope you're meaning hungry for business, not hungry because you never earned any money last month. Depends on which hungry you mean, right? This is important, folks, really. This is the way all human beings operate. Now, I don't have time. I could spend two hours on this. But again, watch the video. Um, read up a little bit on how the conscious subconscious works. It's fascinating and it helps you. Understand about the conditioning process that by the time we reach 6, 50% of our beliefs, attitudes, values, Perceptions and behaviors have already been programmed into the subconscious. By the time we reach 12, 80%, that means that 80% of the decisions we make in our, for the rest of our adult lives from age 12, which are called the formative years, are determined by those first 12 years. It's powerful and it's deep and it's hard to change people's way of thinking, but that's our job. That's our job. Because here, in my mind, here I am, the sales professional with all my tools and I'm prepared and I've got my business card and my product knowledge uh, and I've got all my samples that I can leave with you and the answers to all your questions. But what's going on in your mind, Mr. or Mrs. Client, or maybe there's a couple of you, maybe I'm selling to a husband and wife or a, or a partner, two partners in a business. You've got thoughts and beliefs. You look at me and very quickly this person makes a call psychologically. Do I like and trust this person or not? Will I buy from them or not? Quickly. And it's your preparation, your professionalism, your product knowledge, your psychological beliefs, the 
influence is there. Our job is to build this bridge, put blocks in place like trust, integrity, communication, create a connection, and if they like us and they trust us and we're honest and we're professional, we'll get the deal. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Can you guys tell me? Does that make sense? Thank you, Tamsin. Thank you, Alison. So there are some negative sales mindsets out there, folks. You get called on your mobile phone probably very often by salespeople from a call center. And how do you feel? You feel that these people are irritating. I bet you. You feel a bit frustrated because they're trying to sell you something you don't need. You've got a mobile phone. Why are they trying to sell you a mobile phone? So acknowledge that some people believe, and hopefully as salespeople, but some, we don't believe this, but some do. But customers believe that salespeople are second-rate citizens, they're unprofessional, they're pushy, they're dishonest, and you complete the rest of it. Um, you know, some people believe they're dishonest. You know, the old jokes about used car. I don't believe salespeople are like that. I believe we try darn hard. We go out there, we try and make our targets, we try and serve our customers, we try and keep management happy if we work for a boss. We try and bring in cash flow. But it's harder and harder, folks, because the competition's getting tighter. Uh, the internet is threatening our business. Actually, it's creating a tool. Um, it also, um, money's tight. People are more cost conscious. How many of you have got price issues? How many of you are losing deals because people say what you're selling is too expensive? Anybody? It's amazing how many people are struggling with the price issue. Yeah, that's it, Mark. I hear it every day. So we need to cultivate positive mindsets. We need to really start believing that Nelson Mandela and Oprah Winfrey and Bill Gates, Lady Gaga, Richard Branson, and Pam Golden are all sales professionals. And they make a lot of money and they make a huge difference. Every one of these people sold something to somebody. Everyone. And look here. Here's some more. Madonna, Sol Kersner. Angelina Jolie sells herself every time she gets the role in a movie, and she closed the deal with Brad Pitt. Donald Trump's a billionaire. Um, Anita Roddick started the body shop, became a billionaire. Barack Obama. Anyone, anybody, Warren Buffett, um, Chris Jenner, the Kardashians' mother, Paris Hilton, if you want to take it to an extreme, um, Ray McCauley, TB Joshua, anyone who made a difference to this world sold something to somebody. Oprah Winfrey sold the idea of a talk show to a network and now earns a million dollars a day. So start being proud of yourself if you aren't, folks. Start thinking and acting like a professional and see what happens. Dressing like a professional. Speaking like a professional. Looking at the characteristics of your doctor, your accountant, and start emulating them. You don't have to study for years. But for a few days, yes. Read a book or two, yes. It amazes me how many salespeople don't want to invest time and money in training themselves. Just a little bit. Not years, but certainly hours or days. In addition to learning by experience, because this is an exciting, challenging, and rewarding profession. So what's the similarity between a job interview, a marriage proposal, a bank loan request, a friend's night out request, a business plan submission, or getting your kids to eat their vegetables without resorting to violence? These are all sales pitches. Every one of these is a sales pitch. So I'm not encouraging you to get great at selling just to do well in what you're doing right now. I'm encouraging you to do that because you can become hugely successful immediately wealthy and start your own business if that's your dream by being good at selling. And this is why I say life is a pitch and then you buy. Usually that gets a chuckle out of people and yep, it is a play on words, but that's what I believe. And that's why I, who is an experienced sales trainer who happens to train hundreds of salespeople every month, thousands every year throughout South Africa and Southern Africa, I still go on courses. I still invest time and money to grow myself, to read books on selling, to connect with top sales coaches around the world and ask for advice, to go and sit as a delegate on sales training, personal development, emotional intelligence, new realistic programming. I'm a complete junkie about self-development. And this is why I believe, or this is one of the reasons why, I believe I'm very successful at selling. Ask yourself, how much time and energy have you invested in growing your knowledge? And that's where it sits, the psychology of selling. Confidence comes from knowledge, not just from revving yourself up, closing great deals, making your targets. That's important. But putting positive, practical knowledge. And, you know, folks, everyone's big about product knowledge. 
it's so important to have great product knowledge. But self-knowledge, self-awareness, a sense of Afrikaans, self state self ontwikkelen very important, very important, in my experience. Right, so we've got two out of seven. Let's look at secret three. What do you think it will be? What do you think it will be? Secret three. Look at the picture and take a guess. Type in the box here. <laughs> Sales people are tools. They can be, Francois. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Work with the correct yes, that's right, Santi. Right. Mark, you probably know when you're doing handyman work if you've got the wrong drill bit, the wrong darn equipment, the wrong spanner that's just one size to it just doesn't work. So correct, well done folks, master all of your sales tools. Master all of them. And a lot of salespeople don't realize we've got lots of tools. Let's look at some of them. We've got two ears and a mouth. Most salespeople think you must talk twice as much as you listen. So if your mouth is a great tool and you use it a lot, be careful. Because you need to start working on listening twice as much as you're speaking. And I'm going to share with you just now the alert communication methodology, which is a great tool. So learn to listen and listen to learn. Task list. Very, very important. How many of you have a task list? I need Outlook or a piece of paper. This is so important that you do this. Writing it down though, not just trying to keep it in your head. Writing down the task and afterwards prioritizing. So maybe the first most important thing came number three out of your mind. And learning this, this is a whole tool which I teach in sales training. And then making your comments. These are all tools. Your diary. Color coded, not just with appointments for business, personal, going to gym, anniversaries to remember, birthdays to remember, family stuff, business stuff, things to drop off, potential bookings, when to follow up, commitments. If your diary isn't um, busy and full, it's going to take you longer to become a sales superstar. I'm not saying you have to use a diary, I'm saying ask yourself a question. Does Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, Warren Buffett, and Richard Branson have a busy full diary? And your answer would be, yeah. And then you'd say, no, yeah, but their diaries are full because they're famous. I say, no, they became famous, rich, wealthy, and successful because they managed their diaries. In the beginning when they had very little. They learned how to put themselves in their customer's diary by using the um, ad attendee or invite attendee. It's unbelievable how Powerful, and it doesn't have to be Outlook, by the way. I don't know if you guys use Outlook or paper. Live with your diary. Love your diary. Become great at it. If not, come on one of my courses. I'll show you how. It's a secret of a sales superstar. It's a tool of the trade. How about how do you track your system, your marketing leads, your confirmed appointments, your quotes pending to follow up, your confirmed work, your work in progress? I've got a manual system. Some people have an electronic CRM system. It's a way of staying on top of what's going on so that when business is quiet, you look at your quote spending file and you start doing some follow-up. Or you start using your marketing leads folder to get more appointments. So that you don't have to cold call, but you can warm call. Because nobody likes cold call. So secret three is master all of your sales tools. Um, we've got four more to go. I just want to check, are you guys doing okay? Can you just type in yes, no, if you can hear me. Mark's okay, Allison's okay, Tams and Santi, yep, yep, quiet. Thank you, man. Thank you for being with me. You know, it's difficult, I can't see you, so when I see your little comments, then I know you're on the right track. Right, let's look at secret four. Secret four is, and by the way, I will type in later on at the end the link where you can go and watch all of these videos in your own time just to get more reinforcement because if you go back to this slide let me just show you if you go back to this slide we learn everything through repetition in Afrikaans Dere and Harlem so if you read the text where, this, where the videos are if you watch the video and you listen to me eventually it sinks in that's what habits are the seven habits of sales superstars they are memories or beliefs or programs which allow you to use your diary effectively, to think and act like a professional, to master your tools of the trade, to understand psychology. 
I hope that closes the loop for you. Secret four. What do you think this is? Look at the picture. Come on, Francois, I'd like to hear what you think this is. All salespeople are tools. Part two. Uh, you on here? Tommy is sitting next to me. Bad breath. Check your breath. <laughs> Wait, peppermints before you have an appointment. <laughs> Check your breath. Ah, this is funny. Secret four. Perfect the art of sales communication. Yes, use your voice as a tool. That's correct. That is correct. Okay, Tommy sitting next to you. So Mark and Tommy are Samit Bukarsika. I saw Tommy went offline there. Now guys, when I do two-day sales training courses, live ones, I spend almost half a day just on this, just on asking the right questions and listening. You know, there's a whole cycle of communication where the origination has to be duplicated. You get the source, they encode the message, transmit it through verbal or fax or Skype or email or SMS, decoded by the receiver. But very often, the message received is not the message intended. Or well, miscommunication, that happens all the time. Okay, Mark, you see, so Tommy's PC is kaput. These are the challenges we have with communication, folks. So the cycle of communication and feedback is vital. Um, but this is the one which really, really, and this is explained in quite a bit of detail on the video. Um, ask, listen, reflect, and tell. Open and closed questions, hypothetical questions, drill down questions, leading questions. <laughs> Tommy needs to get the correct tools correct. Listening properly, two years, one night. Repeating back to a customer. So if you say to a customer, what's really important to you when it comes to this particular purchasing decision? And the customer says, well, I need, to, what, what concerns me a lot is backup. You know, how long does it take for you guys to sort out a problem if I have one? And you go back to them and you say, so backup's important to you. Uh, let me tell you the way we operate. When you log a call, we work within a two to four hour time frame for a, a high, um, what do you call it? For a seriously urgent problem, otherwise 24 hours. How does that sound to you? And the customer says, oh, would you be able to reduce that to 12 hours for me? And I would go back and say, well, it depends on the volume of business. How much volume could you give me? The client says, we could give you like 100,000 units a year. And I go back, 100,000, that sounds pretty good to me. All right, so if I could reduce that time frame from 24 to 12 hours with a special SLA with you with the service level agreement, would you be happy to go ahead? And the guy says, yeah, I just need to speak to my partner, but I think we'd be happy to go to head. And I'd say, all right, you need to speak to your partner. How about we schedule an appointment for me, you, and your partner? And I'll bring in an example of the SLA, and I'll bring in my um, service director as well so we can connect and have a rapport on the same page. And this is how it works, folks. You kind of look at this methodology, and you apply it to every communication. And you start getting huge results, and you stop telling you stop going in and doing these presentations. This is hi, I'm Mark Berger from Mark Berger Training. We've been going for 17 years. We train thousands of salespeople a year. And all this boring, monotonous stuff that the client doesn't want to hear. You walk in and you start asking intelligent questions. Because that's what doctors do. That's what lawyer do. lawyers do. That's what architects do. That's what every professional does. If you don't have a list of 20 questions or maybe 50 from which to pick three or four or five important questions, before every client meeting, either face-to-face -face or telephonically, then you haven't got the secret to alert communication. Then you need to come on one of my courses and learn. So some of the power questions you could look at asking is, what challenges are you facing right now? You could ask this of your client. How much are you planning to spend on this project? Or what's your budget? And if people say, I don't have a budget, they're lying to you. Everyone's got a budget. They're just scared to tell you the budget because they think you're going to take the whole budget. So you need to find ways to get them to trust you and give you the budget so that you can quote within the parameters. Otherwise, you're wasting your and their time. Many salespeople don't ask how many quotes they'll be asking for. They just give a quote when a client says, give me a quote. What role do your technical people play in the buying process? Are they influencers? What key factors will influence your purchasing decision? Who's involved? Once we send a proposal, what is the next step? This is a big one, folks. 
the client asked me to do a proposal, I'll say, okay, look, I can get it to you within the next 24 hours. Would that work for you? The client says, no, 24 hours is good. I say, okay, so if you get it tomorrow on Wednesday by 2.30 p.m., by when would you make a decision? Because I want to set an appointment now to follow you up. You see, when you learn the ABC of selling, always be closing, which is the seventh habit which I'm coming to. You start building commitment up front. You don't send the proposal and then start following up a couple of days later. If you're going to commit to doing a proposal for them, which takes your time and your love and your passion and your energy, they owe it to you to tell you by when they're going to make a decision. And the quicker they want the proposal, the quicker they need the decision. If you say, I'm going to send your proposal in the next three days, and the guy says, look, I need it this afternoon. And then you say, yo, that's a challenge for me. I'm going to have to drop a couple of things. Could I ask you why? And the client says, well, because we've got a board meeting at four, and I want to get approval there and then because I want to get you in here and I want to get you working. Now, that sounds very positive to me. So aunt wants to get me in. And then you say, okay, well, when will you be finished the board meeting? Could I call you on your mobile at, say, 5 or 5.30 just to check that you've got the go-ahead so we can start putting the contract together? See, don't just send proposals, folks. You've all been there where you've sent proposals and they go cold and you follow up and the client doesn't return your call. Rather, commit to doing something for the client when they commit to doing something for you. It's the basics of negotiation skills, right? And learn to listen actively by repeating, making eye contact, making notes. It's another great habit of a sales superstar. They make notes whenever they're talking to customers telephonically or face-to-face. And I don't want to hear this, it's rude to make notes. It's not rude to make notes when you're talking to a customer. You don't write down everything they say, just the key words. It's professional. They gain huge respect for you. And you can even ask, do you mind if I make a few notes so I can be sure that I get exactly what you need? They'll always say yes. So master your sales communication skills, perfect the art. And don't go blah, 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 blah. We're the best, we're the greatest, we can do this for you. It's not about convincing clients. It's about changing their belief systems through asking powerful questions and telling them at the right time when you tell them what they need and just basically giving them the remedy to the symptoms which you diagnose like a doctor would. And closing becomes easy. Now it also helps to connect with the next appointment. Yeah, absolutely. Santi, yes, 100%. Habit five, folks. There's a book, it was a New York Times bestseller. The title of the book was The 4-Hour Workweek. If you haven't read it, you should. Because it will allow you to escape the 9 to 5, live anywhere and join the new rich. Written by an American called Timothy Ferris. Note that it was a number one New York Times bestseller. It sold millions. Because it said you could work for 4 hours a week and make 10 times as much money as you currently are working 5 days a week. You know what, four hours a week, it's not four hours a day. That's not a, it's four hours a week. So what do you think? Secret five is, and this one obviously isn't in the video. Secret five is manage your time and work smarter. Time management, interesting thing. See, we can't actually manage time. We can't slow it down. We can't speed it up. All we can do is manage ourselves within time. It's now 2.33 p.m. What have I planned to do between now and 5 p.m., between now and 5.30, between 6? What's in my diary? I can tell you I've got quotes to follow up on. I've got an appointment with a client at 4.30. I've got to be back here by 6.30 for my next webinar. Uh, by the way, there is another repeat of this webinar tonight at 7.30. If any of you would like to watch it again or invite somebody to join, please just let me know. I'm very happy to mail them an invite, or you can even put their email address in here. Anybody that you are, any colleagues, uh, that will help us to spread this word to more people. Just type the email in here and we'll send them a link or an invite to the same webinar tonight at 7.30. Won't be exactly the same, but with the same slides, I might say a few different things. I probably will because I'm spontaneous, just like most professionals are. So what's this manage your time stuff? Well, it's interesting. There are four P's of time management. Be present. Plan, prioritize, and proceed. Be present. Yes, Jen Wurder. This is about linking your mind to your body. Eckhart Tolle wrote a book on it called The Power of Now. Um, it's a great book if you haven't read it already. Being present. Very, very, very important. Um, for planning, your to-do list, your diary. 
being able to prioritize, which again, you learn with your task list. And then just doing it. Not sitting, doing the worst thing first. Having the discipline early in the morning to do the things that's, that are more like, that are challenging. Getting the reports done beforehand, not leaving it till the last minute and then sitting till three in the morning the day before the due date. The Pareto Principle is important. Google it if you get a chance. If you just Google Pareto Principle. I'm going to type it in. There's tons of literature on this. You could spend a couple of hours reading about it and you'll realize this stuff here on the left. You get most results when you are face to face with customers. You get quite a lot with telephonic. If you go down here, you get nothing out of getting lost in Facebook or Twitter unless you're marketing yourself as a brand or your company. Wasted effort is two hour long lunches with friends or colleagues, unless you're getting 10 potential leads from them. It's about becoming quite fussy and pernickety and pedantic about what you do with your time. And those of you who've got kids will realize the moment you have kids, you start wanting to create more free time and you want to work smarter so you can be with your kids. Those of you who love sport or surfing or cricket or squash or gym, you owe it to yourself and you deserve to have a balanced life. You want to work hard, play hard. Or work smart, play even more. So look at what you're doing. Look at the time you waste. We all waste time. I tend to faff around sometimes and be unproductive. My inbox wastes a lot of my time about learning to say no. And then I'll teach you um, about the closer meter. But again, this would take a while, but it's about does the client, is there a 20% chance of the client buying or an 80? Is this a hot lead or a cold lead? And when I spoke to you earlier about all those power questions, that's what drives the closer meter, the answers to the questions. How many people do you want to train? Uh, one or two, uh, 150. When will you be doing the training? Oh, I'm not sure. Sometime this year. Uh, in February the 10th, are you available? All the answers to the questions determine the leads. And this is what happens. The clients who score quite highly on the closer meter, they get a lot more energy and time than those who score low. It just is like that. We have to become, we have to differentiate and classify our customers into A, B, C, or D. Otherwise, we treat everybody the same. We love everybody. We bend over backwards. But we don't get the kind of business that we need to do. We've got to make our targets, exceed our targets, so we can earn great commission and go to Mauritius once a year, right? So manage your time and work smarter. Make that a goal if you've got set goals. Let's just check before we do six and seven. Are we all okay? Can you hear me all right? Please could you type in, otherwise I feel all lonely here. Sandra, Francois, Santi. Yep, 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 I like you, yep. Okay, so Francois, Gerald, Mark, Ellison, Santi, Tant. Cool. What do you think this one's about? I mean, if you read the chalkboard on the left, it's obvious. It's obvious. What do you think this secret is about? Also, that's obviously it, but it's not quite, but it's close. Also. Close. Know exactly when and how to close. You see, it's about reading the buying signals. When do we close? When is the right time to close? One year, when are the buying signals? And just knowing buying signals is a course on its own. Just understanding body language is a course on its own. These things take a bit of time, not years, but days and months. There's 10 power closes that I teach. I can't go through all of them right now. I'll just list a couple of them. So you know, there's the alternative choice close, where you give the customer two options, neither of which allows them to say no. There's the porcupine or the reflective or the throwback close. It's got three different names, but the principle is the client asks you a question and you answer with a question. Client says to me, would you be able to train on a weekend? And instead of me saying, yes, I would, which is telling, I'd say, so would you like me to train on a weekend? And if they say yes, I say, well, which weekend would be most convenient for you? And I pull out my diary. Because the minute they start giving me dates, I've pretty much closed the deal. The alternative choice closes when you say to a client, so will you be paying by cash or credit card? So will you be taking the necklace and the earrings or just the necklace? It applies to anything you're selling. Would you like, would you prefer to meet next week? In the morning or the afternoon? I'm in your area next week, Thursday afternoon. What time suits you? 2 p.m. or 4 p.m.? 
with practice, the stuff comes automatically. You also get the limited um, limited offer clothes or, or the standing room only clothes. You get the if you were me clothes, you get the suggestion clothes. Just learning all these clothes and becoming good at it. And it's easy, folks. Either come on one of my courses if you haven't already or Google 10 best clothes in the world and you'll get them and how to use them and the Benjamin Franklin clothes and the balance sheet clothes and the puppy dog clothes and the try before you buy clothes. These are tools. Earlier we said use your tools. These are scientific clothes, folks. They're not like sort of raw, raw, let's get motivated. They are brilliant clothes and, and different people respond better to different clothes. Again, we spoke about the left brain and the right brain and it all starts to come together. Sales becomes a lot easier and a lot more fun. Learning when to be quiet is very important. I'm a very chatty guy, but I've learned to be quiet after I've asked a closing question. So, if we don't get great at closing, if we don't understand the psychology of selling, if we don't think and act like a professional, if we don't master our tools of the trade, if we don't become great at the art of sales communication, all these little pieces of the puzzle need to fit together in order for us to become exceptional. And I know you're on this webinar because you want to be exceptional. That's what you want. Final secret. Very simple. There's a lady. Science is customer service. Customer doesn't look too happy. Uh, do you think you can lay off the gum chewing for just a moment? <laughs> secret seven. Deliver real customer service, real customer service, not lip service. Most huge companies invest millions telling you how great they are with service. Most consumers like you and me don't always experience real customer service, right? You've all had lousy service. Unfriendly people, long waits, machines telling you we value your call. You are number 12 in the queue. We've all had this. So most people think service is about well, something goes wrong and we fix it. Now, that's a part of service. That's called reactive service. But I believe in proactive service. The moment you first make contact with the customer, before you even cold call them, you go to their website and you do some research and you find out so that you can ask intelligent questions and show the benefits and the features of your company. I haven't even talked about features, advantages, and benefits, but another time. Um, it's from the moment you start talking to people that you start giving service. I've got a whole definition of service, which I teach, and I'm only going to tell you one of them, because the first one is 80% of it. Each one of these stands for something. Well, let me tell you quickly what they stand for. They stand for speed, enthusiasm, responsibility, versatility, eye care, communication, and the extra mile. But the one that really is relevant to our world today is speed. It really is speed, because people want you to get back to them quickly. They want you to solve their problems quickly. They want their quotes quickly. They want their answers quickly. People are impatient, right? The internet is 24-7. <clears throat> they want to book their air ticket now. They want their quotation for sales training now. They want the answers from you to their questions now. And the quicker you get back to them, the quicker you'll get the business. That's why, of course, enthusiasm is important and all the rest of it. <clears throat> so, I've given you the seven secrets of sales superstars. And I'd like to ask you if you have any questions. If you'd like to speak through your microphone, just say microphone. If you'd like to type it, just type it. Uh, because this is the part where I go, all right, I've run through the seven secrets. Some of you have watched the video. Some of you haven't. The video only covered the first four. I've added the extra three on um, always be closing, uh, manage your time and work smarter, and deliver real customer service. Blow them away. Any questions or comments before I start wrapping up? Are you all good? Can we just check that everybody's still there, please? Hey, I'm, I'm glad you're happy, Tamsin. Santi, I'm glad you're good. Mark, yes. Tommy's there with you, huh? Sandra? How do we know when we've closed the deal? That's interesting, eh, Francois? So that's a great question, you know. It depends on how you measure your success. Is it when they sign the contract? Is it when they say yes, we'll close? Is it when they hand over the cash? Usually, it's when they hand over the credit card or the money comes into our bank. Ultimately, Francois, if you look at the definition of sales, the art and science 
of assisting our customer to make the correct win-win buying decision. They can say, yes, we're going to buy. And usually they will, but sometimes they'll change their mind. They can sign the contract, but they can pull out of the contract within seven days. But when the money's in the bank and it hasn't gone out the bank because it was a scam, <laughs> yeah, you see, the Santi agrees. Once All right, guys. So let me tell you a little bit about what's coming up shortly in case you want to grow your, um, your skills even further, in case you really want to get these habits to become habits and not just theory. We've got an online course starting very soon on Tuesday, the 3rd of February. It's an eight week course. It's called Mark Burger Street Smart Selling Skills. You get eight sales modules, eight hours of audio MP3s, four webinars just like this of one and a half hours, which happen at night from half past seven to nine and a complete course. The course is normally 2997 including VAT, actually 3997 but there's an early bird of 2997 if you sign up in the next day or two. Okay, these are the modules that you get on this course. How to think and behave like a, a true professional, which we just did. Psychology of selling in depth, 25 pages of words and exercises and images. Easy to read stuff folks, I've written it in the most easy to understand practical way. Personal preparation and product knowledge, features, advantages, and benefits. Science of selling the tools of the trade, your diary, your task list, what we spoke about. Time management and productivity, which we spoke about. Proper street smart communication skills. How to identify, approach, and qualify new customers, cold calling, warm calling, and all the different closing techniques, the 10 power closes we included. A couple more things about this course. It starts on 3rd February. If you sign up today or tomorrow, it's only 2997 including VAT, which is about 2,630 Rand excluding VAT. It's not a lot to invest if you think about it in an eight week course. When you're done with the course, you will have completed the equivalent of a four day training and you wouldn't have had to stop work because you can do this one hour a week at lunchtime. You can do it in the evenings for an hour a day. But if you do an hour a day, you've done four hours in a week. By the time you've finished eight weeks, you've done 32 hours. It's like, yo, I've done a four-day sales training course. You know how few people have done a four-day sales training course? And not interrupted their work. You get a certificate of attendance. to say you've done the course. You get audios you can listen to in your vehicle or on your smartphone. And you get, most importantly, the knowledge, which will give you the power to become a sales superstar quickly. So, if you guys want to, Watch the videos. I'm going to paste the link into the um, into the box, and if, this is where you need to click on. Let me see. You guys see the link down here? Speed Smart Selling Skills Online Course. If you click on there, there's a whole video where I explain the course to you in detail. There's more detail about the course. You can sign up and register. You can pay by credit card. You can pay by EFT. You can get your manager or your boss to pay. You can pay a little bit of it and get your boss to pay and go 50-50, 25-75. Plus, if none of you, if any of you do not feel you need the course, I understand that's cool. You've learned enough today, but maybe you know somebody who would benefit. Somebody in your team, somebody in your family, a colleague or a friend. That's the only thing I ask in return for this free training is that if there is anybody that you think may be interested, that you just copy and paste this URL. I'm going to put it in here again. Control V. Oh, well, it didn't copy. Let's try and paste it again. Just that you spread the word, folks, in the world. And if you click over here, you're going to see all about this eight week course that you may be thinking of attending or considering. And if any of you want to contact me directly about it, you can just mail me on mark at markburger.ca. Welcome to drop me a mail if you'd like to. If you want me to send you any more details or brochures other than that link, just say send me more info and pop your email address down here, and me or Francois will connect with you. Okay? There's also a money back guarantee in case you're concerned about investing a couple of thousand in an eight week course. Firstly, you're going to make a heck of a lot more money back than the money you're investing in yourself. You're not spending this money, you're investing as a return. And this is how it works. You'll get the first two weekly modules. So you'll get a module on Tuesday the 3rd and a module on Tuesday the 10th. Then you'll attend the first webinar on the evening of Tuesday the 10th. If you didn't get it, you say, Ah, oh, Mark, I thought this stuff would be great. You sold me. You closed the deal with me on the webinar. But it's not doing what I thought it would. 
we send us a mail saying, sorry, Mark, please can I have a refund? We say, sure, we'll refund you every cent that you invested with us, and you can keep the two modules, two out of eight. I mean, I don't think it gets better than that, folks, in my opinion. So ask yourself, are you serious about achieving real sales success? Have you lost deals that you should have got? Do you look at successful salespeople and go, shoot, I want to be like them and I will be like them. Do you want to get there quickly? And you might be saying to yourself, mm, eight weeks, long time. It's not a long time. Doctors study for seven years. Lawyers for five. Architects for four. Eight weeks. So any questions about the course, please? Mark, Allison, Tamsin, Santi, Sandra. Any questions about this eight week course? Have any of you done live training with me? Have any of you, um, sorry, that was meant to be eight. Santi, no questions? You know where to click on the link, Santi, there in the box. Alison, that you see, I'm happy you have no questions, but if you come on this course, you will learn to ask lots of questions, which help you to close more deals, because every close is actually a question. Every customer commitment is a question. James, and click on the link, watch the video. And again, if any of you got any questions, you can mail Mark, Mark Berger, at co.za. And I will come back to you. So, folks, it's 2.52. Thank you for investing this hour in yourself. I hope to see you on the online course or one of my live courses. If not, I hope you can recommend us to friends and colleagues. Otherwise, have a lekker middag. Enjoy your day. Have a great year. And keep going out there and doing what you do and getting better and better. Because today you can be better than you were yesterday. That's what I say every day. Today I can be better than I was. Today. So thanks folks. Enjoy your afternoon. And we'll see you on the other side. Oh, it was your first webinar, Tamsin. Awesome. I've done about 25. It's a learning curve. And I remember my first webinar. It must be mock like me. It was a challenge. But thanks to Francois and a bit of experience, it keeps getting better. Thanks, Alison. Was this also your first webinar, Alison? Oh, it's a pleasure, Santi. Which company are you guys with, by the way? Ah. Which conference, which company are you with, Alison? Okay. How's, how's it to the team and to Andre Radaman? Thanks, Santi. Well, please, folks, tell them there is a webinar tonight at 7.30. Any one of your colleagues, friends, family, anyone you know, please spread the word.